Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another inking video. This time I'm doing the line work for another creepypasta drawing, which I'm working on the video at the moment. I've still got to colour it and then I'll narrate the story over the top. Lots of people seem to really like my Jeff the Killer creepypasta video, so I thought I'd do another one. I have lots of fun doing these, reading the stories, and people seem to enjoy that, so I hope you guys will enjoy this one too. This one is a shorter story, which is kind of nice because the Jeff the Killer one was like half an hour long and it took us so long to make and I don't know if it got boring for some people. Hopefully it didn't, but this one will be a lot shorter. But I thought I'd just show you guys some of the inking process and like last time with that creepypasta video, I know not everyone is into the creepy stories, so I'll be doing two versions of it. One with the regular kind of narration over the top where I'll give some tips about what I'm doing and then the other will be the actual story. So this time the character is Eyeless Jack and he's basically a masked character who steals people's organs. So yeah, he basically sounds like a really nice guy. If you're into romantic comedies, kind of lighthearted dramas, you'll probably enjoy this one. It's kind of about him hanging out with his mates. He's got a crush on this girl and he just keeps making a fool of himself. He's always struggling to find a balance between killing people and harvesting their organs and hanging out with mates, playing video games and trying to hook up with girls. So it's a pretty interesting story. Yeah, but I'm lying. There's kind of none of that apart from the killing and organ harvesting. It actually sounds like a really cool story though. <laughs> Maybe I should write a story about that. I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I did the line work for this quite different than some of my other line works. I intentionally did it pretty rough and scratchy. I just kind of thought that helped with the horror kind of vibe, just having it kind of gritty and scratchy. It's going to look way better when it's colored, basically. It's not one of the most attractive line works at the moment, just because there's not that much detail, seeing as it's just the mask, there's no hair or anything like that. It just looks like there's not that much detail going on. But when I go in and color it, it's gonna look way better. I decided to add lots of smoky effects as well, just because that's what I enjoy drawing at the moment. I go through phases, so lots of my drawings have smoky effects, and I thought that just kind of made this drawing look a bit more interesting than just having someone in a hood and a mask. So I kind of went with that. It's pretty over the top, but I think it's gonna look cool in the end, and it just gives it a bit more style to it and flow to it and just Gives it a real kind of creepy, almost supernatural look. Sometimes with my drawings, I just get this idea and it might not be realistic at all. It just doesn't really make sense, but sometimes I think it just looks cool, so I just go with it. I mean, not all your drawings have to make perfect sense. I like the smoke and that's what I did. <laughs> Even though it looks like he's on fire or something. <laughs> also, the hand that I drew, I just used my own hand as a reference. As much as I don't enjoy drawing hands, at least you've always got a reference available for you with your own hands, unless you're an amputee. That's probably not appropriate to say, is it? Inappropriate jokes aside, it's actually really handy being able to look at your hand. See what I did there, handy? Looking at my hand, yeah, okay. What I'm trying to say is, you can always look at your hand, you can position it however you want to be able to use in your drawing. You can take a photo of your hand just on your phone and then look at that as reference as you draw. That's what I did. Let's move on. If any of you guys have any specific creepypasta stories you'd like me to make into these drawing videos, let me know in the comments because I definitely want to do some more of these in the future. I've read a couple of cool stories here and there, but if there's certain popular ones you guys would like me to recreate in these drawings, definitely let me know and I'll check them out. For anyone who hasn't really heard of what creepy pastas are, basically they're just like short horror stories. Some of them are reasonably long, but they're not really the size of like a novel or anything like that. They're just written by amateur writers, so the quality varies a lot. There's some pretty good stories and then there's ones which are pretty dodgy. They're definitely cool, there's like a website, there's a couple of websites which have just a bunch of the creepypasta stories on there, so you can check them out. But I just think it's a really cool place for writers to share some of their work and get feedback from other people, and you can find some really cool stories there as well. So, <laughs> there's definitely some issues when I read these stories because sometimes there's kind of mistakes in the grammar and there can be lots of kind of plot holes and that kind of stuff. But it's kind of all stuff you'd expect from just kind of amateur stories. But it's way better than I could do, so I can't be that critical of it. 
but that's kind of why sometimes the stories don't make the most sense. Now I'm just finishing off the line work with the final details. I could have put a lot more time into this line work just with lots of little details and cross hatching and stuff but it's kind of getting to the stage where I think it was enough and a lot of the detail is going to come in with the colouring. So while it doesn't look amazing at the moment, when it's coloured it should all come together. A lot more detail in there and just texture and stuff will all come in with the Copics. So I felt like this was enough detail in the line work. For you guys who enjoy your creepypastas, I've got a whole playlist of creepypasta drawing videos which I did a while back so some of you guys might have missed them. So you can check out that playlist and there's a whole bunch of stories there. Some of them are pretty cool and you kind of see how my style has evolved since then. I think the drawings really improve from video to video so it's kind of cool seeing the progress there. Anyway, that's this video pretty much done. I hope you guys enjoyed it. The creepypasta video will be coming out in a few weeks, I'm guessing, once I upload this. Still a bit more work to do, but it is coming, so hopefully you guys will look forward to that. If you want to keep up to date with my artwork, check me out on Instagram. I post lots of stuff, so follow me there. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, Eyeless Jack is coming to your house tonight while you sleep and harvesting your organs. I'll catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video. Normally when you're using Copics, you're trying to get like a smooth blend. When I colour blood, I'm going for the opposite. So I'm messing the colours around with a cherry marker. And then I think I use light mahogany, I believe it's called, which is like a brownish red. And that gives it a really cool look. So I'm